The time has come to make my Star Tracker electronic. So, if you've seen the previous video, which you should watch before watching this one, this is my barn door star tracker. Basically, if you point this at the North Star and turn this at such a rate that it goes around once per minute, it tracks against the rotation of the Earth, you can take long exposure night sky photos, which is great to see more deal to see more detail in the Milky Way, get some wide angle Andromeda shots. The problem with this is because you're rotating the handle, uh, it shakes a little bit every time you touch it, so you need to leave it for a few seconds in between. Which means if I wanted to use a longer lens, like a, a 70 millimeter, 100 millimeter lens, I'd have to be touching this every couple of seconds. If you've got a wide lens, you only have to turn it every 15 seconds or so. Um, so by making it electronic, basically I want to be able to step this up to track with zoomed in lenses, and it also makes it so you don't have to slave over the handle, and for the, the five minutes that I'm taking a star photo, um, I can just kick back and enjoy the sky. So I'm actually just going to be building directly onto this one. I like having the fallback option of a handle. In the case that my battery dies, I like that I can still take some photos. Now, what I'm going to use is this threaded motor. So to drive this motor, what I'm using is an Arduino Uno, though any Arduino platform should work. Uh, and I'm also using the Schwarzhaus Easy Driver, and an Arduino is about $20. This board, if I recall, was about $13. Uh, and then I've got four AA batteries, which drive the motor. Basically, I'll be mounting this right on the top, and the screw will drive this open. So in the code, I've got something that calculates basically the trigonometry you need um, which will state how many rotations of this guy need to be done over a period of time. And then it just starts counting away the seconds. Basically, I'm just going to be drilling a hole here. I 3D printed this plate. I'll share the model for this. The motor attaches to this. And then when I put it face down, I'll just screw this in to the piece of wood. So the motor's in place, it just plugs in with this. And then these have to be attached as well. Um, so I think what I'll do is probably arrange them side by side like this. Kind of temporary. I guess I should try to clean this up. Let's see what I can do. So it's on. Every time that light flashes, it means a correction is being applied. The motor is ticking away. No question of will it open. So I was building the Star Tracker and adding a motor to it. And in the process, I busted a piece off the motor shield. So, I've got to replace the motor shield. The reason I busted it off was because I was working on trying to get the motor to actually spin on the tracker, which wasn't going as planned. And I think it's actually because I was dumping 6 volts with my four AA batteries. So we're going to add two more AA batteries, which is hopefully going to help drive the motor, because it asks for 7 volts. Um, so. I've got to do some rewiring. There's getting a little bit of wire exposed on the motor connection. Three, two, 
ground. Right there. Perfection. Step to pin two. So the signal and the motor cables are connected. Now I just have the power from the battery to connect, as well as the power out to the Arduino. Okay, so that's all the soldering and all the wiring that needs to be done. To test this, I am gonna put six batteries in, and when we turn it on, hopefully we get some action here. Yes! A lot of turning, doesn't seem to be a lot of moving. So I needed to find a way to stop the rod from rotating, which would drive it up and down. So I 3D modeled this ridiculous little cylinder, which I am now printing. So this little screw, this is going to attach to the threaded rod. It'll go through there and I'm going to mount it to the plate so that as it turns the rod can't spin. Hey, it works! What? It works! Once this is attached, I just shaved a real sketchy little groove in here. The key actually just sits right in there, so it can't rotate because of where that screw is. So that worked super well. Now I need to think of more st stuff about taking it to the field, like how to mount all the gadgetry. Uh, and I'm actually thinking I'm just going to use this piece of plastic. So here's the final product. I've got it rigged up and attached on that piece of plastic. Uh, now the, all that's left is to actually test it in the field. So it's been about three weeks now and we've had an amazing amount of rain. Um, and I haven't been able to actually get out and test this outside because it's cloudy all of the time. But I did come up with a calibration video where uh, I put some stars on my TV and I get them to rotate at the same speed as the Earth. Which means if I film the TV with the tracker on, it should subtract the motion. Uh, so if you look at these two images, you can see one with no tracking, with lots of star trails, and the other with pretty focused stars, which was for almost seven minutes of exposure. Um, so clearly it's working. And I've also left the motor on for 15 minutes, which means at 30 centimeters you should get 2 centimeters of rise in the board, which is exactly what I see. Um, so while I can't show any photos of the actual dark sky, uh, with two different ways I've tested that it's definitely spinning at the right speed.